एवरीवन वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल मिशन नेट फिजिक्स एग्जाम एंड गाइस टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मुले ऑफ मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स इट विल बी अ काइंड ऑफ रिवीजन व्हिच वी विल डू इन टुडेस वीडियो फॉर द फॉर्मुले ऑफ मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स सो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो एंड आल्सो इफ यू विल लाइक द वीडियो यू कैन लाइक इट यू कैन शेयर इट विद योर फ्रेंड्स यू कैन सब्सक्राइब द चैनल इफ यू आर न्यू ऑन दिस चैनल and also press the bell icon to get the notifications for all the new upcoming videos on this channel so let's start the video and let's talk about the important formula we are having in mathematical physics and from which or related to which we can expect the questions in the upcoming exam so guys here we are having the very first formula which i have mentioned here that is related to the residue because as we all know that contour integration is a very important topic of mathematical physics so we should know about this thing as well that how can we find the residue for different type of poles okay so first i have mentioned here for the simple pole how can you find the residue so there we are having different methods to find the residue for the simple pole guys the very first method which i have mentioned here is this one that is residue of function at z is equal to a let's say z is equal to a is a simple pole for any given function and i hope that it is clear that what we mean by the simple pole whenever you are going to equate the denominator of the given function with zero and you are uh, getting this point that the overall power of that uh, we can say that factor presented in the denominator is a one okay or that part from which you are getting that pole uh, pole overall power of that part is one so in that case what you will say that the pole which you are going to get from that part is a simple pole okay so next step is to find the residue for that pole if that is going to exist within the contour okay so guys the formula is residue of the function at z is equal to a is equal to limit z tends to a z minus a into fz so by using this formula you will easily be able to get the residue for any simple pole okay and just do it only in that case when the pole is going to lie within the contour next we are having this formula so let's say if the function Uh, which is a function of z that is in this form there is phi z upon psi z there can be some new numerator there can be some denominator which can be the function of z or also in the numerator you may have the constant term okay so in that case what is going to happen in this case you can use this formula to find the residue of that for that function at the simple pole what is the formula that is numerator as it is but the first order derivative of the denominator as you can see i have mentioned here sin dash z okay and then overall functions value you will find that z is equal to a at the end and you are going to get the residue for that simple pole but here also we are having one condition only then you are going to use this formula when the function given to you is going to satisfy this condition the condition is that the uh, numerator Uh, the value of the numerator should not be equal to zero at the pole, but the value of the denominator should be zero at the pole. Okay, so when you are going to replace this z in the denominator by a, which is the pole, okay, and you are getting it zero, then you can use this formula, and you will get it zero as well, because we know that we are going to find the poles by equating the denominator with zero. Okay, so just you have to keep these points in mind. Now, next we are having the residue. for the pole of order n let's say uh, by equating the term uh, which term you are going to get the value uh, z, like value of the pole that is the value of the z which is presented in the denominator the overall power of that term is like more than 1 in that case whatever will be the power of that uh, term okay uh, let's say 2 3 4 it should be integer in that case you will say that it is the order of the pole whatever power is there from which you have got that pole okay uh, from that term so guys here we are having the formula residue of the function at z tends to z is equal to a will be equal to 1 upon factorial n minus 1 dn minus 1 upon dz n minus 1 and z minus a to the power n fz okay and overall like after solving this derivative part what you can do just put z is equal to a here at the end wherever z will be present okay otherwise these terms are going to get simplified in the terms with the terms which will be there in the function okay so next is the method which can be used in the uh, in the case when we are having a simple pole or in the case when we are having a pole of order n so it is applicable in both the cases so guys here whenever you are having any function of z given to you at that 
uh, in that function whenever you are going to equate the denominator with 0 and you are going to get the value of z. So what you can do that is the pool when you are going to equate the denominator with 0 and you are going to get the value of z. Okay. So what you can do let's say you have got the value of z that is a which is a pool. In that case just consider z minus a is equal to t. Okay. And after that if it is possible for you to write the given function in the form of the series just write it in the form of the series and wherever you are having z minus a presented write t or wherever you will have z you can write t plus a okay you, you just need to remove the z from the expression after that what you will do you just need to uh, like find the coefficient of 1 upon t from that series which you have written or which you are getting in the question itself so guys in this way whenever you are going to find the coefficient of 1 upon t that will be the residue for that particular pole for which you have written this expression and you are going to get the residue okay so this is a very simple method but we just need to know about this thing that when it will be better when we are going to use this method or this method or like all other methods we are having for different poles so we should have this idea and accordingly we can get that okay for this given question i can use this particular formula and it will be more easy for me to solve this question and it will, it will be less time consuming as well okay so you should keep these points in mind Next, we are having the Cauchy's residue theorem, which we are going to use to get the final answer of the contour integration. So, in this case, guys, here is a very uh, like little point we are going to talk about, but it is also important. Okay, see for anti-clockwise direction, whenever the direction of the contour is anti-clockwise, in that case, the formula which you will use that will be two pi alpha into sum of residue at the poles which are lying within the contour. Okay, you just need to find the residue for those poles which are lying within the contour. But in the cases whenever you are having the limits of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity, in that case you will consider only those poles which will lie in the upper half of the complex plane. But it also includes those poles which will lie purely on the real axis or which will be real poles. Okay, so uh, like for any clockwise direction just use this formula for clockwise direction of the contour given to you. You will use this formula that is minus 2 pi alpha into sum of residue at the poles which are lying within the contour. Okay. And also there is one more thing whenever you are having the limits of integration given to you from minus infinity to plus infinity and you are going to get the value of the pole which is like purely real. In that case you can use the formula that is just pi iota into sum of residue at the poles which are lying in the upper half of the complex plane. But in that case since the pole are, poles are going to lie in the real axis. So you don't need to worry about it. You just going to use that formula that is pi iota into sum of residue at those poles which are real. Okay. And only in that case uh, when you are having the limits of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity this is going to work. Okay. Next you are having the Laplace transform formula. So guys to find the Laplace transform of any given function ft which is defined for the positive values of t. So in this case, the Laplace transform of ft will be equal to integration from 0 to infinity e to the power minus st, ft and dt. So this is another important formula from the Laplace transform which we all should know. And I hope that if you will be familiar with this formula, even if you are not familiar with the separate formula we are having in the Laplace transform, you can solve the questions from the Laplace transform in that case as well. Okay, next is the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function that is Laplace transform of del x minus a that will be equal to e to the power minus f a s a sorry. Okay, and next we are having the Laplace transform of unit step function and how we can define the unit step function. I have mentioned that point here that if u x minus a is a unit step function in that case the value of the u x minus a can be 0 and 1. For x is less than a its value will be 0. For x is greater than equal to a its value will be 1. So whenever you want to find the Laplace transform of unit step function which will be defined in this way you also should keep this point in mind that okay what kind of function is known as the unit step function and how it can be defined. So as I have mentioned it here it will be defined in this way its expression or the solution for this uh, Laplace transform for the unit step function will be equal to e to the power minus sa upon s. Okay, sometimes this is going to help you if you will be familiar with the direct formulae of these expressions for which we are going to talk about the Laplace transform. Okay, so guys I hope that whatever formula I have discussed here will be clear. Let's talk about some more formulae and uh, uh, after this we are having some other important formulae as well. Let's talk about them. So guys, 
next we are having these formulae which we are going to discuss in this video. So very first formula now is the Fourier series. Okay. So guys Fourier series is like a very simple uh, series we can write. But for that for solving such kind of questions we should know about the formula. Once we will be familiar with the formula, we know about it, we will easily be able to solve any question related to it. So the formula is fx is equal to a0 by 2 plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos nx plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity b n sin nx where a0, a n and b n are the constant coefficients and for them as well we are having the formulae. So we need to know about those formulae as well. So the formulae are if the function fx is defined in the interval from minus pi to plus pi then we can write the formula in this way that is a0 is equal to 1 upon pi integration from minus pi to plus pi fx dx then a n can be written as 1 upon pi integration from minus pi to plus pi fx cos nx dx similarly b n can be written as 1 upon pi integration from minus pi to plus pi fx sin nx dx now how can you memorize these expressions or the formulae for the a0, a n and b n. a0 is like just a simple one, 1 upon pi integration minus pi to plus pi fx dx. But if you will observe the a n and b n formula, you will find that here with a n we are having cos. Similarly, in this formula with like for a n we are having cos with fx. Okay. And for this one we are having sign with fx when we are going to write the expression for b n. So this is the way like you can memorize this thing. Next we are having this point. Like if you want to know about this thing that when which of the coefficient will be 0. If the given function fx is even, in that case the bn will be 0. You don't need to find the bn, you don't need to use this formula. You can directly write bn 0. If you are familiar with this thing or if you can find whether the given function is even or odd. Okay. Even if you will find it, you will get 0. So just to save the time, you can directly put bn 0 if the function is even. If the function given to you will be odd for which you are going to write the Fourier series, then in that case just write a0 and a n as 0. You don't need to find them. Otherwise, if you will solve the question for that, like those two coefficients, then also you will get them 0. Okay. Instead of solving, you can directly put them 0. Next, we are having Taylor series. So, Taylor series is just the expansion you can write for this thing. And the best thing about these formulae is, and the questions related to them is, like when you will read the question, you will directly come to know about this point that, okay, this is a question from this particular topic and you just need to put this formula and you will be able to get the answer for the given question. Next is Taylor series. So for Taylor series, we are having the series expansion that is F A. If we are going to write the Taylor series around X is equal to Z is equal to A point here. Okay, so that is F A plus F dash A. Z minus A plus F double dash A upon factorial 2. Z minus A whole square plus so on too. So this is the Taylor series expansion about Z is equal to A point where we have considered that uh, F it is a function which is analytic within a circle and at the boundaries of the circle as well. So here we have considered that Z is equal to A is the center of the circle. But again, let me tell you one more point here that Maclaurin series is also there. If you are going to write the Taylor series for Z, uh, A is equal to 0. Okay. If you are going to write the Taylor series for a is equal to 0 or around a is equal to 0 and the series which you will get that is known as the Maclaurin series. So in the exam if they are going to tell you that you need to find the Maclaurin series that clearly means that you need to write the Taylor series about z uh, not z is equal to 0 that is okay z is equal to 0 we can say because here we are having z is equal to a about which we are going to write the Taylor series so that's fine okay we can say z is equal to 0 point uh, now next is trapezoidal rule. So guys, to write the trapezoidal, uh, to find the integration with the help of the trapezoidal rule, you need to know about this formula of the trapezoidal rule. Basically, trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons Wanther rule are going to help you to find the integration for any given function. So guys, here let's say the function is fx and the limits of integration have been given from x0 to xn. In that case, you can use this formula to get the answer of this integration with the help of trapezoidal rule. That is h upon 2 y0 plus yn. What is y0 here? y0 is the value of the function at the lower limit and yn is the value of the function at the upper limit. Okay? Plus 2 into y1 plus y2 plus so on 2 plus yn minus 1. Let me tell you what is h here? h is the step size. Let's say here you are having 0 and this is the value 1. 
So zero to one limits have been given to you, and you are uh, going to take the difference from zero, zero point one, zero point two. So you are taking the step size zero point one in that case. Okay. So that is the step size we are having. Depending on that, you will get all other values of the function at different points in between the given limits. Okay. Next, we are having this formula which is Simpson's one third rule, and which is going to help you to get the integration. Okay. So guys, in this case, the formula is h upon three y not plus y, and initially, like what you are going to do, you are going to add the values of the function at the boundaries, or the, we can say the limits given to you x naught and x n, which is the lower limit as well as the upper limit. Okay. So just find the value of the function at these two limits and add them together. This is same in both the formula. Then plus four into y one by after y naught, you will have the value y one. That will be the next value of the function after when you are going to take the first step size. From let's say it is zero, then zero point one. Okay, so zero point one will be the uh, x one, and the value of this given function at x one is known as the y one. Okay, similarly for all other values like after y one, there will be y two. Then you will have y three. So y one, y three, y five, y seven. You just need to take these values or the value at these position in this uh, bracket, or when you have been multiplied it with four. And plus two into y two plus y four plus so on. So you are going to write it in this way: y naught plus y one. So this is y one, okay? And then y two, the value of the function at the next point. So this is y two. Similarly, the values which you will get, you are going to put those values here, okay? So this is the value of the function at the uh, values of x you are having, okay? There is one more important point that whenever you are going to use the Simpson's one third rule to find the integration. Just try to have the even values of n because this is only applicable for the even values of n. Okay, so guys, I hope that whatever things I have discussed in this session will be clear to everyone, and also it is going to help you to know about the different formulae with the help of this video. So it was a kind of quick revision. Okay, we will try to discuss the other formulae as well in the upcoming videos, and uh, you can like this video if you liked it. Along with that, if there is like any uh, suggestion you want to give about this video and and you want me to make any other video you can comment below this video i will try to provide you the videos for those particular topics as well okay so thank you very much guys for watching this video till the end and if you like the video please like it if you are new on this channel then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications for all the new upcoming videos on this channel along with this you can also share this video with your friends thank you very much for watching this video thank you